How many relationships do you know that follow this pattern? First, things are going great, you're head over heels, and over time you find a nice groove to navigate the ups and downs, maybe even meet the parents and move in together. But then at about the two year mark, the cracks are starting to show. You keep having the same arguments, the sexes, meh. Basically, your mental, physical, and emotional connections are feeling weaker every day. Every relationship gets to this point eventually where you have to make a choice. Do you cut and run or do you stay and build? If you're tired of running and also want to get out of this rut, there are two ways to get things moving. If we haven't met before, my name is Doris. I'm a certified coach with a master's in psychology and through this channel and in my coaching practice, I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. So jumping right in, what usually gets us into loops and patterns of any kind is that we're operating on autopilot. So wake up to the pattern, open your eyes, ideally all your senses, and slow down for a minute. Go into curious observer mode and review the last couple of meaningful relationships you've had. No need to overanalyze it, just imagine you are watching those relationships play out at high speed on a screen with the volume turned down. Now take note of the top three things you did that gave you joy and the top three things you did that made you miserable in these relationships. Yes, you've heard me. I want you to really look at your ABCs, your attitudes, behaviors, and communication that contributed to your experiences in those relationships. There are no right or wrong answers. This isn't a test. You don't even have to tell anyone. This is just an exercise for yourself. This is the preparation you need to step into your agency. Change is hard. That's why we all want the other person to do it. But once you accept that you cannot change your partner, you can start working on changing your own ABCs. The good news is you and your partner or partners form a system. So as soon as one person changes their behavior, the system also changes. The idea is to interrupt the usual flow of triggers. This will take some time and hey, there are no guarantees how it will work out, especially if you're the only unhappy one in your pattern, then your partner won't have an incentive to change. Just remember you can't change that anyway. All you can focus on right now are your three things and that's plenty. The top three things you wrote down that make you happy, name them, own them, and then make space for them. How can you do more of those in your current or next relationship? Maybe put them on a calendar, set money aside for them if necessary, and know that it is okay if your partner doesn't like to do the same things. Give yourself permission to do what pleases you. Just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean you have to do everything together. Bottom line, you're responsible for your happiness and your partner is responsible for their happiness. And we're definitely going to go deeper into this topic in future videos. The top three things you did that made you miserable, name them, own them, and then practice changing them. This might be a little harder, but I promise it's worth it. Maybe you had an unspoken expectation and thought, if they love me enough, they'll know. Or maybe you don't even know what your wants and needs are and we're just hoping your partner would intuitively make your life better. Having these expectations is natural. We were all raised on happily ever after fairy tales. Unfortunately, in the real world, you have to let people in on what's happening in your head and in your feelings. So you actually have to say the things out loud. Wait, you did nothing wrong whatsoever and it was all your ex's fault? Well then, maybe you need to very gently dig a little deeper and honestly ask yourself why you stayed in those relationships for as long as you did. You must have gotten something out of it that was useful at the time. And since you're still here watching this video, you already know you have to change something to get out of these stuck ruts, loops and patterns, right? So I think that's a sign that you are ready for personal growth. And yes, that's going to be uncomfortable, but yay you for doing it. Bottom line, Ask for help when you need it, even if that makes you uncomfortable at first. Give your partner a chance to show up for you. And most importantly, if you feel something, say something. Naming, owning and addressing your piece of this rut is how you step off the merry-go-round and step into your agency. Having agency means being able to act and advocating for yourself. Now, did you notice what these exercises all have in common? They're all about raising your self-awareness. They're all practices in paying attention to your experiences, your ABCs, and accepting your agency. As you know, this is the first piece of being a smart romantic. I have another video about how to raise your self-esteem here for you to watch next. And if you'd like to talk through any of it, there's a link to booking a free call with me below. For now, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you again next time.